How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel, No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your WWE Canadian podcast that reviews the WWE and No Holds Barred to anything we say, pun intended. This is the May Young Classic Review and Reaction, Episode 3 and 4 for you guys, and wow, were they ever good. We had two potential match of the tournament so far. I know it's only been round one, but so far, two of the match matches of the tournament have been in episodes three and four of the May Young Classic. I'll go over that and all the other episodes in the May Young Classic. Before we get on that, guys, I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. You can follow me on Twitter at RealKyleMasters. You can also follow the podcast, as you can see right there on the YouTube version, at no Holds Barred WP. If you would like to listen to the podcast, we are available to follow on Spreaker, Stitcher, and iTunes. So go check us out where it's easier and convenient for you to listen to us and be sure if you're watching on this on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon for all upload updates. And if you are listening on the other platforms, give us a five star rating. Everything helps and is much appreciated. So yeah, guys, doing episodes three and four now. It's the end of round one, and holy crap, was it ever a crazy round one? And there's so much potential in this tournament. I basically feel in the same way as I did in the end of the first round, the Cruiserweight Classic, but. I'm loving that there's the more potential in the women's division because that's what we need right now. We what needs work in the WWE, especially right now and currently on Raw and SmackDown with those like atrocious divisions right now, and the lack of booking is terrible. And the and the, the talent is there. I just don't know why they're using it. I think now if we get more women involved in here, then they're going to be forced to use a lot of them. So. I hope this brings a lot of women to the main roster. I'm going to go over some people I think that deserve to be on the main roster or we'll see on the main roster sometime soon. So I think we're going to begin with episode three, well, obviously. And then we'll start with the first match. We had Tony Storm versus Aisha Raymond. And uh, this was actually a decent match. I forgot to do a background on both of these girls. I do apologize for that. I thought I had it written down. I didn't. Probably should have done that. But uh, Tony Storm had this, like... Uh, rock star kind of gimmick. I, I like that. I like the little top hat. I think she looked pretty good. She looks. She has the look for uh, someone in the women's division. I loved Aisha's uh, outfit as well. She kind of was wearing like an Ember Moon kind of outfit, though. You you notice her bottoms with with those like uh, it was kind of like Athena Roman style bottoms. I think Ember Moon kind of wears the same thing. So I, I was going. Did she steal Ember Moon's outfit? What the hell is going on here? Anyways, um, besides the background checks on these girls, it was a decent start to the match. The crowd was uh, very behind Tony Storm uh, after the handshake when Aisha didn't even handshake uh, Tony Storm. So we've seen a lot of that in this tournament so far. Um, Tony Storm looked very, very good. I can definitely see her being uh, more of a huge role in NXT um, if they don't bring her up to the main roster. Just, yeah, I can kind of see her mixing in with the main title picture if they chose to go that way or, you know, just below it. You know, someone that can compete and actually be there in the division. So I like Tony Storm and I like what she has and what she brings to the table. Um Aisha Raymond I can also be see being a dominant heel either on the main roster or NXT. She kind of has that like karma presence. If you guys remember Karma or Awesome Kong from TNA when she was in WWE, I kind of feel that and get that from Aisha Raymond. So I think they can she they both can be used in a, in a way either on the main roster or NXT. So I really hope that there be continues with these girls and does something with them on either NXT or the main roster. Or if not, they can go back to the Indies and then we can hopefully see them in the WWE in the near future. Um. Aisha gets carried away uh, taunting the crowd at one point, and she uh, misses her splash from the top rope. And then uh, Tony Storm just capitalizes with a roll-up, and then that's the end of the match. So we've seen a lot of these throughout the tournament, these 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 uh, weird finishes, these roll-up finishes or finishers that you wouldn't have thought that would have ended the match. And uh, another interesting end to a match. we got Tony Storm moving on to the second round via roll-up. Damn. That's crazy. I, I don't know. I guess it, it, it just shows you and it kind of shows the fans and the people watching that anything can happen in this tournament. You just got to anything can happen from anywhere. So I kind of like that and I kind of don't. I'm kind of mixed feelings around that. But interesting. Tony Storm moves on and uh, we'll see what happens with Aisha Raymond going on in the future. So we move on to the second match in episode number three of the first round of the Mae Young Classic. And that was Dakota Kai versus Kavita Devi. And Debbie is the first Indian wrestler in the WWB in the WWE in history. Uh, she was trained by the great Kali. I, I know that's, that's not saying a lot, but we'll see. I mean, she what she showed in this match was actually pretty good. 
Um, but Trained by the Great Kali, when I first heard that, I'm like, oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> you guys all know my thoughts on the Great Kali. But um, she has a very confident attitude. She presents herself as like a powerful woman from all her weight training and deadlifting she does. Um, she was discovered from a WWE tryout as well. So good for uh, Kav Kavita Devi for being noticed from that tryout. Um, as for Dakota Kai, she is from New Zealand. She presents herself as like the friendly girl next door. But when she gets in the ring, she becomes more dominant than people think. She's known for her work and shimmer and some of her appearances on NXT. Uh, she's a strike kick based style wrestler. And as well, her, her speed is a key in every match she has. Um, into the match we go. Devi basically dominated the beginning and most part of this match. She looked very, very good, I thought. Um, and even the crowd was starting to get behind her as the match was going along as well. She's working a lot of the arm of Dakota Kai. She really, really focused on that arm. So it looks like Kavita Devi is more of that style wrestler. Like she, maybe her finisher was supposed to be something to do with an arm. I mean, we didn't get to see it. But um, she's working a lot on the arm of Dakota Kai, whether that's even a placement maybe for the rest of the tournament or not. We'll have to see as the tournament goes along. Um, Devi showing a lot of her strength throughout the match as well. She even military pressed Dakota Kai over her shoulders and then threw her in front of her, which takes a lot of strength. I'm not even saying a Dakota Kai being really light. I mean, that takes a lot for a woman to do that. So good for, uh, Kavita Devi for showing her strength in that, in that military press. Um, Devi eventually got too cocky though, and she ran to the turnbuckle and Dakota started like running around the ring. And then I'm going, what the hell is she doing? And then all in all, where she just gains a little bit more speed, like the speed I was talking about in the in present. And remember what she said in, in her intro? She she loves her speed. All of a sudden, she just snaps with this haluva kick. It was like a haluva kick style turnbuckle kick. It almost looked like the same, but it came from like almost an, a side angle instead of uh, kind of same thing. Kind of comes like straight on you. And then uh, Devi's lying on the ground, and Dakota hits this finisher, which basically is the coup de gras. By Finn Balor, it's the double foot stomp to the stomach. Even JR called it the, two, the coup de gras on the replay. But uh, Dakota wins. Out of, like, <laughs> just basically out of nowhere. Like, she gets domed the entire match. And all of a sudden, she gets to hit these two signature moves, and then that's it. She moves on to the next round. Like, shock. I actually thought Kavita Devi was going to move on here, especially with, like, they're, what they're doing with Jinder Mahal and, and trying to get the, the name out there in India. You would have thought they would have had Kavita Devi at least move on to the second or third round to get, you know, a name or a presence out there. But maybe they have plans for her. Maybe they have uh, plans to sign her and move her up to the main roster or NXT. We'll see what happens. But... Good for Dakota Kai for moving on here in the uh, Mae Young Classic. Next match we had on episode three was Bianca Belair versus Sage Beckett. Uh, Bianca Belair wants to show the world that she, what she's about and what Bianca Belair is all about. She appeared on NXT facing off against Leo one time. I actually remember that. I watched that match. Uh, famous for using her huge braid. She has like, this long-ass braid that goes down to like almost her... like. Her thigh almost is it's, it's that long. Um, she uses it as like a weapon. They show like her uh, highlight videos and using her as like a whip. So, uh, and she's a University of Tennessee graduate. Um, our boys uh, Tyler Jones and Trey Patterson, fans of the podcast, are from Tennessee, so they'll be interested to know that. Uh, Sage Beckett wrestled all around the world. She gets referred to as a witch, but prefers to be called a shaman. Okay. Because she uses air, water, fire, and earth to win her matches. You heard that right. <laughs> she faced off against Emma in an NXT taping before. It was part of her uh, highlight package. Uh, she is a vicious, strong style type of wrestler. And she is a Team 3D Academy graduate. She was, so she was trained by both Devon and Bubba Ray Dudley. So the good for Sage Beckett here and a good uh, resume here for Sage Beckett. Um, Bianca Belair, uh, very ripped. She got like a six pack almost, man. She looked very, very good in the ring. Uh, Sage reminds me of like a better, less stiff Nia Jax, if that makes any sense. Um, so it was a good, very physical match. I really enjoyed it. Um, a back and forth for the most part, and it kind of continued throughout the match. It eventually led to Sage eventually uh, was talking or taking too much time to do her finisher. She's like, and she's building up all the earth and the water and the fire and the turnbuckle. I don't know what the hell she was doing. And Bianca Belair capitalized on the opportunity, and she dodges the splash that, she, that uh, Sage was attempting and uses her break is a whip so she just whips her across the chest with that braid and all of a sudden just like that spear 
by Bianca Belair. And that's a vicious spear, man. It looked very, very uh, well done and very physical. And uh, Sage gets it for the one, two, three, and then moves on to the next round. So, uh, sorry, get Bianca pin Sage for the one, two, three. And Bianca Belair is moving on to the next round in the Mae Young Classic. So, interesting. I'm actually interested to see what they do with Bianca Belair going forward. So, we'll see what happens with her. I, I think there's uh, more of a showing behind Bianca Belair than we actually we're seeing. As for Sage Beckett... I don't know if that gimmick would have ever worked in the WWE with this whole shaman thing. I think that would just would have been a bust, in my opinion. So, we'll see. Uh, we get into the uh, main, I guess you can call it the main event of Episode 3, the last match. Now, it was Piper Nevin versus Santana Garrett. And this was one of the matches, one of the two matches of the tournament so far. This was one of them. Unbelievable match we got out of these two. Uh, Piper, known for her work in Shimmer, Shine, and ICW. Uh, loves using her size as an advantage in the ring and can do a lot of moves half the women her size cannot. So when she said that, I was really intrigued because I didn't really know of Piper. I mean, I heard of Piper Nevin, but I never actually watched any highlights or matches from her on YouTube or anything like that. Um, Santana Garrett's got this like superhero type gimmick, basically like the Wonder Woman of WWE. She's prevent presenting herself. It's almost like she's like a John Cena and like a Hulk Hogan, like the way she presented herself in the promo before the match, like in the highlight package. So I think that she's more of that style, and that's fine. WWE needs more of that. Um, very, very good in-ring technique from Santana Garrett. I know I've known her before uh, this May Young Classic, and it was right from here. Uh, she had multiple appearances on uh, NXT facing Emma and Asuka. I remember the Asuka match. Um, she wears patches on her cape that she comes out on, and it's all the countries that she's wrestled in. So I thought that was pretty cool and very interesting and a good way to tie into her entrance. Um, and she was trained by Scott Hall and Larry Zabisco. Interesting. <laughs> Uh, crowd was really, really split down the middle of this. They were really looking forward to this matchup. Very, very good back and forth uh, fa uh, throughout the match, too. I really, really enjoyed this one. I was really uh, into it. I, like From start to finish, I couldn't get my eyes off the screen. With Santana uh, having to adjust and maneuver different and like, change her strategy due to the size of Piper Nevin. Piper Nevin's huge, man. She looks like a dominant force in, in this woman's uh, wrestling world. Uh, lots of good spots throughout the match as well. A lot of good near finishes. Uh, Piper Nevin eventually sets up Santana... Uh, Garrett for a Mishinoku driver. So this was the finisher of Piper Nevin. And I think she was actually known for like doing kind of like a Vader bomb style finisher. I think that, or maybe it was like a signature move. I think I kind of heard that around before I even got into this tournament. But she hits a Mishinoku driver, and damn, was it ever, it ever looked good. And very well done. Very, very well done. And Piper Nevin is the one to move on here. That shocked me because I actually thought Santana Garrett was going to be the one moving on from this just for seeing the highlight packages before the match so that was really crazy and very well done you know what i give props to both these girls i can actually see both these girls uh staying in uh and being on the main roster in the near future uh it would it would they would, they would do great for the division uh same with especially uh santana garrett and uh, piper maybe she can be the one that's competition for nia Jax, and they can you know it'd be like a dominant force feud in the division i can kind of see them having something uh down the line if they ever choose to go that way so good for both these girls and an impressive showing there in episode number three um let's get into episode number four we had uh, started off with renee michelle versus candace LeRae. Uh, Renee Michelle wants to show the world that women can hang with the men in or hang with the men's division just as good as they can. She says she has the charisma, determination, and athleticism to make it here in the WWE. She is a native Cuban and African American mix, which plays into her ring attire really well. And she also has a extensive MMA background. So a lot to know about Renee Michelle. She's facing off against Cancel Ray, and Cancel Ray is well known around the Indies. And if a lot of people, you guys, follow the Indies and you know of Cancel Ray, she is the wife of NXT star Johnny Gargano, who is at ringside for this match. She calls herself the modern day Mighty Mouse. All right. Very well known in the Indies as well. Like I said, she says she is not a high flyer, but a high risk wrestler. 
So just a, high, a lot of high flying moves, but they're all high risk. So I like that about Candice LeRae. I love what she brings to the table as well. Um, she's been wrestling since she was 16 years old. So she's been wrestling a very long time. And I, I've known her for years as well, too. So good for Candice LeRae for finally getting a shot into this Mae Young Classic. Um, and she looked very, very good in the ring and throughout the match with all those years of wrestling under her belt. She still looks like she can hasn't missed a beat since like the start of her career. She looks very, very good and very uh, fluid, if, if that makes any sense, in the match. Um, crowd was very much behind her side. They were chanting stuff like uh, Candice Wrestling. You know how they chant Johnny Wrestling. They're doing the same with her, but with Candice in front of it. Uh, Renee Michelle also had a great showing, not taking anything from her in this match. Although I do think she needs to work on her speed a little bit and like work in that speed department. She doesn't really look uh, that fast. I mean, her, her technique is there and her wrestling base is there. She's, I think she needs to be a little bit more faster and then she'd be a really good... Uh, uh, really good for the division, even good for NXT in the near future. Um, great finisher by Candice LeRae. I really, really loved hers. Uh, it was a uh, swinging neck breaker from the second uh, rope and the turnbuckle. Uh, really, really well done, really well executed, and that's how she won. And then Candice LeRae will now move on to the second round, and good for Candice for moving on, man. I, th I see you're doing a great deal of damage in this tournament. Um, next match... Was my girl and the girl I wanted to win, uh, Tainara Cody or Conti. Uh, I really love her, man. I, I I went I picked someone out of the tournament when they were doing all the announcements, and I wanted to. I went and looked into their background, and I, I just went for some reason. I just went with Tainara Conti. She, she has a really good look. I mean, she's beautiful. Um, and she faced Lacey Evans in her match, but unfortunately, she didn't win in this case, which sucks. I really want her to move, keep going, but I don't think this is the last we've seen of Tainara Conti. Um, she's from Brazil. Tainara and uh, she's wrestling and basically wrestling for her country she said in her highlight package she's a first Brazilian female wrestler in the WWE so that's something to uh, uh, be proud of she's been studying judo for 15 years and she's 22 so she started judo at the age of 7 damn wow She's a submission-based wrestler with a lethal submission moveset. JR referred to her as a highly sought-out prospect, and Derby is keeping a close eye on Tainar Conti, which is sick. And I hope that she does come to the Derby in, in the main roster or even NXT in the near future. I think she can do a lot of damage, and she can be a really good asset for that division um as for Lacey Evans she's referred to as the lady of NXT so she isn't currently in NXT right now if you guys don't know former Marine Corps soldier she says she is very hard-headed and determined to win and not giving up that easy and she says you uh she's not one to take as a pushover as well um, going into the match, the match was very, very, very physical. A lot of two-way action going on. Lots of back and forth attacks. I really liked uh, what both girls brought to the the match here. Uh, Tenar using a lot of judo moves and unique wrestling style moves in this match. A lot, and, and same with Lacey. Both these unique styles they showed in this match is something we haven't seen in the division yet. And I think they can both bring something to that division and both bring their styles of wrestling to that division to actually help it out big time. Um, he with Lacey showing off her strength and toughness as from being a Marine soldier, it really shows in the ring how tough she actually really is. Uh, definitely both styles are going to be needed in the division uh, in the upcoming future. Lacey Evans hits her finisher, which actually looked great. I can't really tell. I don't remember what that, that move was named, but you can kind of picture an Alabama slam, and then basically the head is is behind, and she kind of lands backwards. It was crazy. I didn't think WWE would actually allow a finisher like that to happen, but... Awesome, awesome way to do it, and, and it sucks because my girl Tainara is out now. But again, this is not going to be the end of Tainara Conti. I promise you that. She's only 22 years old, so she's got lots of time if she needs to develop more or if WWE wants her to develop more. But I don't think this is the last we've seen of her. A really, really good ring presence, and same with Lacey Evans. Uh, really good finisher, and she wins the match. And she moves on to round number two. Next match, we had Nicole Sav Savoy. I think I'm saying that right, against uh, Rian Arena Gonzalez. So, Nicole, she says she is the queen of suplexes. We didn't see that in this match, which was really mind-boggling to me because that was like the main focus of the highlight package was she's like the suplex machine, and we saw this much suplexes in this match. 
She's very jacked too, like very, like really, really well defined. Uh, she's known for her work in the indies, like Shimmer, as uh, one of the companies she's worked for. She's a trash talker in the ring. They highlighted that in the package as well of her trash talking a lot in the ring. Um, she has an extensive MMA training background as well. Now, as for Gonzalez, she is daughter of former pro wrestler Rick Desperado Gonzalez. Never ever heard of this guy. Uh, but she is a daughter of a former pro wrestler, and she is a collegiate athlete, six feet tall, and is a powerhouse style wrestler. So interesting matchup here. I don't, although it was decent, it wasn't the greatest match of the tournament. I must say, I was really kind of bored, and kind of like the crowd was kind of bored in this match. Uh, Gonzalez basically dominated the entire match from start to finish, and then out of nowhere, uh, Nicole hits this like arm breaker. And actually locks it in after kicking Gonzalez a little bit. And then Gonzalez taps within like five seconds. And I'm going, wait, what? Like, I was like half paying. I know I was half paying attention. But really, out of nowhere, this arm bar. And it just, again, it shows goes to show you that anything can happen in this tournament. And it can end like that. So, in, insane. I can't believe. I actually thought Rena Gonzalez was going to move on now. But the queen of suplexes who didn't hit one suplex... Is moving on to the next round, and hopefully we can actually see some of these suplexes. Because from what they've shown us in that highlight video, damn, like I really wanted to see that in this match, and we got none of it. So I really hope we see a better showing from Nicole Savoy. I think I'm saying that right in the second round, as she now moves on from being uh, Rena Gonzalez. Interesting. So we get into the last match, and it's basically like main event quality what we got in the last match of episode four and it was Kari Zane against Tessa Blanchard the other match of the tournament so far that I was talking about um Zane or Zane very 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 anticipated debut in the WWE ring a lot of people were looking forward to this there was so much talk and so much hype behind it she's a huge Japanese sensa sensation and she's really well known on the internet and the indies as well the only Japanese woman in this tournament as well something to take note of uh, her sailor gimmick now I want to know why she's going was she going with the sailor gimmick and JR made loud or made light of it in the in uh, the match she said it's due to her likes of boating and Yachting. Yes. That's why she has a sailor gimmick. <laughs> okay, but it doesn't take anything away from her as an, an incredible wrestler. Um, she's very, very flexible type of wrestler. We've seen that in the highlight package. Uh, she wants to showcase her Japanese style and show off her Kari Zane style. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, Blanchard, third generation uh, wrestler, her father being in the Hall of Fame. Uh, she's had NXT matches with a lot of women on the main roster. We've seen that in the highlight packages. I think I've seen Carmella and even Alexa Bliss. So Blanchard has been around for a bit. Uh, wants to make a name for herself and not just based on her family name. So that's basically with all kind of like third, second generation superstars. They kind of don't want to live by the name. They kind of want to make a name for their own self and not just the daughter or son of so-and-so. Um, but what a match. Damn, this was the first round match. It's a damn shame that this was in the first round. I was hoping this should, from what we got in this match, it should have been like later, like third round, even the next round. Like, I can't believe we got this in the first round. Such an incredible match. Lots of hype for this match as well. It's, it's a Zane's verse, or Kari Zane's first match in a WWE ring. A lot of people were looking forward to this. I was looking forward to it. Um, there's a crazy spot in the match that I want to point out by Blanchard. An incredible spot. I, and Zane took it so well and sold it so well. Um, she had Zane on, or Zane was on the top turnbuckle, and then Blanchard kicks her like one foot, will make sure it drops down to the second turnbuckle, and then Blanchard just hits this like code breaker out of freaking no, like just hits the, this code breaker out of nowhere, and just oh my god, I mean the, the spot looked unreal. The crowd really got behind it. Really, really good spot, good sell by Kari Zane, and a really well done spot by Tessa Blanchard. I really, really like that spot. Um, Kari Zayn, I love her quickness in this match. You can see a lot of her, her moves and the quickness that she has behind it. I, like her, her dropping elbows, they're, they're done so quick. So I love Kari Zayn just from seeing this match. I mean, I've seen a couple of her indie matches, not a lot. But uh, she's definitely going to be a dominant, dominant woman in this division. And a very, very much needed woman in this division. Almost like Oscar level right now is so far what I'm seeing. Um and I love the toughness and physicality from Blanchard. Don't get me wrong. I'm not taking anything away from her. I really loved her in this match. They both brought it to the table and brought a great wrestling match, for even for the first round. That's why I'm shocked that this was a first-round matchup. Um, 
Kari Zayn eventually built up momentum and she hit her famous elbow drop that looks so good. This is like the best elbow drop I've ever seen, especially from a woman. Like, this is crazy. Really, really well done. And Kari Zayn moves on to the second round. And after the match, both women hugged it out as a sign of respect to each other. And really, really, really well done match. I give props to both these girls, especially Tessa Blanchard. I don't think this is the end. This is the, not the last we've seen of Tessa Blanchard as well. I think we're going to see more of her as uh, coming in NXT and I think maybe we're going to see her on the main roster eventually soon as well. It all depends what they do with all these women in the future and, and whether how many they sign or you know we, we don't know exactly what's going on. I know there were rumblings of maybe an all woman show. I don't really think that's going to happen in WWE uh, especially with Vince McMahon. He would just ruin it like he's ruined 205 Live so we'll see what happens but uh, that was a really really good first round. I really really enjoyed it and I cannot wait for the second round and then get that review out to you guys but that's going to wrap it up guys for round number one of the Mae Young Classic I think before I get into round two in the next video in the next podcast I'm going to do like a round one kind of little wrap up right before we get into the round two so stay tuned for that when they do release episodes uh, one two three and four of round two or I think it's just uh, four episodes I don't remember I don't know how they're doing it but uh, the next episode is for round number two other than that guys that's going to wrap it up. Thanks for tuning in and thanks for listening to me at Real Kyle Masters on Twitter. Go give me a follow. You can follow the podcast at No Holds Bar WP. We're also available on Instagram, No Holds Bar WP as well. If you're watching this on YouTube, youtube.com slash NHBWR, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon for all upload updates. If you are listening to this on Spreaker, iTunes, or Stitcher, make sure you give us a five star rating. Everything helps and everything is much appreciated. That's going to do it, guys. I'm your self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. I'll see you in the next one.